Isaiah Wong and Jordan Miller. That is a lot of firepower right there. And, you know, there's only three other schools that have four players that, that are averaging over 10 points a game on the same team. So, so lots of firepower. So it's the Miami Hurricanes and the Lafayette Leopards as we get set to embark on a six-month journey through the college basketball season. It'll all culminate in March. It's a long ways away with March Madness. Underway from the Watsco Center, and the first possession of the season is in the hands of Nigel Pack, the transfer from Kansas State. Lafayette's running a straight man here. Wong, Miller, Pack, Poplar, and O'Meara, the starting five for Jim Laranega. In his 12th season now at Miami, 226 victories here in Miami, 141 losses. The Leopards now under the direction of first-year head coach uh, Mike Jordan after Fran O'Hanlon hung him up after 27 seasons, the all-time winning leader in the Patriot League. Cal, the Canes have come out really pressuring them hard. Pressuring the ball very hard. Three in the corner is blocked by Isaiah Wong. Rivera, Zambi, Fulton Jenkins, and O'Boyle, the starting five for the Leopards. Pack on the wing. He'll fire for three, and it's good. His first triple is a Miami Hurricane. That is one smooth shot right there, Kyle. Nothing but net. Nigel Pack, the second-year freshman out of Kansas State, Last season, the Big 12's most improved player, a first-team All-Big 12 recipient. Averaged 17 and a half points for Kansas State last year. A baseline drive and a block. Good idea, came over to try to help, just didn't there to get his feet set quite in time. Penetration by Wong on the other end. Pack can fire away, and he is really good from downtown. Yeah, and it really is good uh, penetration by Wong. He draws the defense, kicks it out, and boom, there it is. Josh Rivera, the forward at 6 feet 7 inches tall and 200 pounds, a freshman out of New Brunswick, New Jersey, will step to the line for the Leopards. A Lafayette Leopards ball club that went 10-20 and 20 overall last season. They were 7-11 and 11 in conference play. First is up and no good. Too strong for Rivera. Josh Rivera played three years at St. Thomas Aquinas. One year at Putnam Science Academy. At St. Thomas Aquinas averaged 16 points, 10 rebounds per game, three seasons. The true freshman looking for his first points in college basketball. And he misses both. Wilga Poplar, left wing in deep, no good. Down with the offensive rebound is Isaiah Wong, who penetrates in the paint. And he'll head to the free throw line. That was a good hustle, pick up the loose ball. We end up getting a second chance at it, and we get a chance to convert to here. Isaiah Wong, a fourth-year junior out of Piscataway, New Jersey. One of four Hurricanes to play in all 37 games last season. Started 36, averaged 15 points, four rebounds, two assists, nearly one steal, and 33 and just north of a half minutes per game. Wong shot 45% from the floor, 74% from the free throw line last season. But he misses a pair. Ryan Zambi with the basketball, commanding things for the Leopards. Nice crowd on hand with Watts go center for the opener in college basketball. Look out below, Josh Rivera, the freshman. Yeah, that didn't look like a freshman there, Kyle. Nobody was there for the Hurricanes to step over and get in front of him there. Shouldn't have been able to go out of the hole like that. Wong with a baseline drive, up and under and off the glass, and it's good. 5-2 to two, Miami in the early going. Two and a half minutes into the college basketball season here in Miami tonight. What a flush by Josh Rivera to get Lafayette on the board. Here's Fulton, and he puts it up, and it's good. A chance to tie the game early. C.J. Fulton, the sophomore out of Ireland, a Patriot League All-Rookie Team member last season, started the final 27 games 
a two-time Patriot League Rookie of the Week. And you can see on that replay, he's got a good upper body strength to hold that ball and finish the three-point play there. This is going to be a gritty team. Miami's going to have to wear them down. Neither team sharp from the charity stripe early in this contest. C.J. Fulton led a nation in assist-to-turnover ratio last season. Give and go for Miller to pack. Left wing. Oh, fire away for three. No good. Off the right side of the iron. Lafayette with an opportunity to take an early lead in Coral Gables here tonight. Fulton brings it up the floor into the hands of O'Boyle. The senior out of Scranton. Defense by Jordan Miller. He goes Rivera, baseline, and he tried to slip it through the paint. It's a turnover. That was a great defensive series by the Canes. Everybody stayed on their man. A lot of help side defense there. Forced a turnover there at the last second. A three for Nigel Pack and a pair for Isaiah Wong. 5-4 Miami early over Lafayette. A Jim Laranaga staple, Murray. It's a motion offense. It's built and based off of chemistry and working with one another. Here, Jordan Miller fades away from the baseline. Not strong enough. Rivera corrals the rebound. He'll bring it up the floor. That's TJ Berger with a left hand dribble. Berger working on pack. will get a high screen from Rivera. Now, Boyle nearly had it taken away by Omir. Open three left wing, and that's off the mark. Down with the rebound and in transition, Miami. Here comes Wong. Look at Poplar. Thought about pulling up. Now Pack, dribble drive, kicks it out. Top of the key, North Chad O'Meer too short. Look at Poplar has an offensive rebound for Miami. We'll reset the shot clock. Nice rebound for Poplar there. Keep the, keep the series alive. Now Wong will fire away. A triple for Isaiah Wong. He took that shot with a lot of confidence. That looks good tonight. This is a Miami Hurricanes team that's a little bit smaller than they were last season. A lot of folks would tell you they're a little bit more athletic. F3 is no good by O'Boyle. A foul on the floor. Jordan Miller is going to be called for the personal foul. His first, 8 for Miami. How about this dunk by the freshman? Josh Rivera looks right, comes back left. Look up below. It's 8-4, Canes. Down up in Lafayette, Mike Jordan begins his first season as the Lafayette men's basketball coach after being named to the position on March 29th. Mike spent nine seasons as an assistant, Murray, as a coach on the Colgate men's basketball staff, is the 19th coach in program history, replacing Fran O'Hanlon, who guided the program for 27 seasons before announcing his retirement. Yeah, there's always a little pressure coming in behind somebody like that who's a legend. But, uh, you know, he's got a, a pass as a player as well as a coach, and I think he'll he'll uh, he's real excited about a chance to, to lead this ship, I think. Lead back to just one for Miami after the triple was good by Berger. Isaiah Wong will pull up and deep. 23 feet out, rattled around the rim and bounced out into the hands of C.J. Fulton. I think Coach L might have liked a little more ball movement before that shot right there. Fulton, a really good point guard and quarterback for this Leopards team. Nice look underneath the layup, no good. That was a nice look underneath by Kyle Jenkins, the junior forward out of Connecticut. Wilga Poplar will fire away for three. That's the same spot he was in before. He likes that spot right there. Maybe the most improved Miami Hurricane. If you take a look at his body build in particular, one year ago to now, a stark, stark difference, an elite defender, and the Miami Hurricanes and Jim Laranega think he could be a superstar for this team. Absolutely. That's one of the first things I noticed when I stepped out here was how different his body is right now. He's really, really in great shape. Rivera works on the baseline. Fulton will fire away for three and hit. This team's going to be tough. They're going to want to, they, they like to shoot the threes and they're going to square up and go ahead and let them fly. Deep downtown from the near side wing for C.J. Fulton. He's got five. 
It's 11-10 Miami with 13 and a half to play here in the first half. Jordan Miller works baseline. Look at the ball movement by Miami. Anthony Walker in the game, but the three's too strong. Bensley Joseph down with the rebound. No foul on the floor. And it's pulled down by Rivera. An opportunity to take the lead now for Lafayette. Coming out, asserting themselves, playing physically, matching the intensity of Miami. Absolutely. And this is a great opportunity for them, right? They came here. Um, supposed to be the underdog, and they're going to just play. As, they're going to give it all they got. See what happens. North Channel Mir checks back in for Miami. Here you go. There's Wilga right there. Perfect spot. He likes it. Kick it. Lafayette comes right back with their three as well. Justin Vanderbond checks in. For Lafayette, the seven foot, 240 pounder in the transfer from Boston College. Up top for Rivera, working on Harlan Beverly into the game for Miami. And Josh Rivera, the freshman, gives Lafayette the Leopards their first lead tonight. That was a tough shot. That certainly doesn't look like a freshman. A lot of rotation early here for Coach Larinaga and the Miami Hurricanes. Harlan Beverly has missed the better part of the last couple of years due to a back injury. Miami happy to have him back. That's Reese off the mark by Anthony Walker. And in transition, boy, Fulton was taking a long look down the floor at Kyle Jenkins but thought better of it. Rivera works inside. Now back out for Berger. Good help. Fulton working on Beverly. Nowhere to go. Three ball. Downtown, no good. Down with the offensive rebound is Jenkins. Another opportunity here for the Leopards. Bensley Joseph into the game for Miami. And now Jenkins hands it off to Wong. In transition, Miami's got numbers in the corner. Bensley Joseph, the southpaw for three. It's too strong. North Chad O'Meara down with the offensive rebound. Isaiah Wong in through the paint, puts it up. Foul on the floor, we'll take a break. Lafayette 12, Miami 11, early in Coral Gables. Let's go center, 11.40 left to play. The Leopards by one over the Hurricanes. Miami 0 for their last four from the field. A scoring drought of two and a half plus minutes. Miami basketball. Now to the timeout, Nigel Pack with a pump fake, pulls up too short. North Chad O'Meara can't get the layup to go. A third opportunity for Miami. So Pack misses, O'Meara pulls it down, and he can't hit the easy layup off the left side. And Pack can't convert his second opportunity. That was a very physical rebound by O'Meara. You can see his talent inside. Far side three. The right wing is good for Kyle Jenkins. Lafayette has a four-point advantage. They are on an eight-nothing run over the course of the last two and a half minutes. The Miami Hurricanes, one of their last nine from the floor. Harlan Beverly will fire for three and hit. Harlan Beverly, a fourth-year junior out of Detroit, Michigan, played in all of four games last season, Murray. Missed the final 30 due to a lingering back injury that required surgery. The last time he saw substantial minutes in college basketball, you've got to go back to the 2019-2020 season. I'd say it's really impressive to see players wait out injuries like that, especially a back injury. That can be a really tough one to recover from, especially in the sport of basketball. Beverly, top of the key, looking, firing. Can he make it back-to-back? -back? No, too short, not strong enough. One and done for Miami offensively. Pulling the ball into the front court is Berger. Can help. And Berger threw it away. He had Justin Vanderbond, the Boston College transfer wide open. That yeah, was great help by Miami. They set a pick. Stopped, stopped him over, over the pick and he threw it away. I think Jenkins was hoping Vanderbond was going to roll and he popped out. And the ball ended up on the baseline. So a turnover. By Lafayette, Miami with a chance to retake the lead. Bensley Joseph, Anthony Walker, Nigel Pack, North Chattel near Harlan Beverly, the five on the floor for Coach Larinaga. The work down low for North Chattel Mir, who pulls up, and that's no good. Miami struggling from the floor early. 
Lafayette's playing really good help side defense. They got their men way off in the, into the paint on the opposite side. Oh, Boyle inside for Jenkins. Two Hurricanes leave their feet, and that's going to be another turnover by Lafayette. Boy, they're quick with their feet. They've hung with Miami the first 10-plus minutes in this game, but now the turnovers are starting to cost them. Yeah, they're getting a little, uh, a little ahead of themselves down there, a little panicked. Jordan Miller checks back in. Anthony Walker will take a seat. Talking about Harlan Beverly, by the way, just got this note. It's the first time that Harlan Beverly has seen game action officially in 347 days. It was his first three-pointer made since January 2nd of 2021 against your former all amateur the Clemson Tigers. That's awesome. It's so great to see a kid hang in there like that for a year and, and, and recover from an injury like that. I really like that. Nigel Pack gives Miami the lead back. They lead by two. Under nine minutes left to play in the half here in Miami. Welcome back, college basketball. Good to be back with you on ACC Network Extra. O'Boyle working on Miller. This is an easy look from the elbow. And it's a good bucket for Vanderbond. It's a good looking shot. Up His first elbow, point. Squared up, face the basket, and pull the trigger. His first bucket is a leopard. So all square, 17 all. Nigel Pack, too strong off the back of the iron. An offensive rebound by Jordan Miller. And then Miller and North Channel Mir both go up. We'll see who they credit the basket to. I think it was Miller. It was Miller. And he's got his first points of the season. Just the pressure. And a tight man here. It's Ryan Pettit, the guard, bringing the ball up the floor. For Lafayette, that three is no good by Vanderbond. But it's back into the hands of the Leopards. They'll fire away again. This time it's T.J. Berger. It's 20 to 19, Lafayette. He's two of four from deep. He's got six points here for the first half tonight. Two teams that aren't scared to shoot it from way downtown. Now it gets swiped out of the hands of Nigel Pack. Harlan Beverly with a dribble drive, and that's going to be a charge. Mike Jordan loves what he sees on the far side of the floor for the Lafayette Leopards. They lead by one, 7.33 left to play here for the half in Miami. Well, that man's the talk of the town in Coral Gables. Head coach Jim Laranega in his 12th season as the head coach of the University of Miami basketball program. 226 victories, 141 losses, and he led his Hurricanes on a remarkable run last season. Murray had culminated in a trip to the Elite Eight. I thought he did a masterful job last season. He took that team and he gave them free reign to sort of come together as a team with the unique characteristics and they just meshed and became magical last year. He did a fantastic job with that team. It was amazing. We were talking earlier. You rewind a year ago. We were upstairs in the suites here broadcasting a Miami exhibition against Nova Southeastern up the road in Fort Lauderdale, one of the premier Division II teams in college basketball. Miami won that game like 106-95, but you walked out of it feeling rather unimpressed. And as the year went on, they got better and better and better. Yeah, I remember, Kyle, we walked away scratching our heads a little, saying, what's going on here? And I'll tell you what, it's just like you said. Every week they got better and better, and they meshed and gelled, and they had their own personality as a team, and they just really came around at the end. And so much of it, Murray, it's predicated on chemistry. If they're in trouble, Coach L will call a timeout. They'll run a set offensively. But it's the old-fashioned motion offense. You trust your teammates, you know where everybody's gonna be, and you make it happen on the offensive end. You got it, and that all starts with trusting the man at the top, which is Coach L. They trust him, they know his system works, they're gonna stick with it and make it work. Isaiah Wong pulls up, 4-3, no good, too short. One and done, Fulton down with the rebound. Murray, really the biggest difference here in the early going. Miami has eight offensive rebounds, but they haven't been able to convert just five second chance points. 
That's not enough, Kyle. You're going to fight your way to get second uh, rebound, offensive rebounds. You've got to convert those. You've got to make those count and make the other team pay, and they just haven't been able to convert those tonight. Berger with the basketball. Five on the shot clock. Steps back in the face of Wong. No good. An air ball. Jordan Miller has it. Here comes Miami in transition. They were the second best team in college basketball in transition last season behind only Arkansas State. But Miami turns it over. Josh Rivera seeing a lot of run here early. Foul on the floor, and they're going to get Nigel Pack with a foul and a little push underneath on the far side of the baseline. You can see here. A little too much with that yeah. right hand and left forearm. Yeah, like. ref's just going to try to clean it up a little bit so it doesn't get going for later in the game. Well, Nigel Pack's going to have to take a seat. That's his second, and you'd assume he's probably out until the start of the second half. 20-19 to 19 Lafayette. The scoring drought once again nearing two and a half minutes for Miami. A scrappy Leopards team here early. Fulton, the point guard, working on Miller. Far side baseline. Now Vanderbon up and a blocking foul is going to be called underneath on Vensley Joseph. Once you get in that arc down there, it doesn't matter if you've been stationary for five minutes. Yeah. Joseph kind of bailed him out there because he was too far into the basket. I'm not sure he was going to convert that anyway. Justin Vanderbon saw action in 10 games as a freshman at Boston College last year. Had a couple of blocked shots against Virginia. Had four points, five rebounds at Florida State. Scored five points against Duke at the ACC tournament in Brooklyn. I tell you, the transfer portal has definitely changed basketball, right? I mean, for the kids as well as the programs and the teams. A kiss off the glass for Vanderbon. It's 21-19, Lafayette leading Miami. 541 left to play in the first half in Coral Gables as we start the college basketball season here tonight. Vanderbon hits a pair, so a three-point lead for the Leopards. Lafayette went on an eight-nothing run earlier in the half, their largest lead four. Leading by three with 5.30 left to play. Wong with a dribble drive. Right hand off the glass. Nowhere close. Down with the offensive rebound. Nor Chad O'Meara missed the first. Got it again. And he'll go to the free throw line. O'Meara definitely has a live body down there. He gets a couple of offensive rebounds. And again, can't convert. We need to try to finish here. Wong went up and just threw a wild shot off the right side of the glass. O'Meara tried to pop it back in. Got his own offensive rebound. Nor Chad O'Meara, a 6'7", 248-pound third-year sophomore out of Bluefields in Nicaragua, was a second-year freshman at Arkansas State last season where he earned Sun Belt Player of the Year honors. He was the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Year. Played in all 29 games, started 28, averaged nearly 18 points. Makes one of two. It helps, too. He's got a 6'11 wingspan and a 37-inch vertical. So he's a, he's, a, he's a physical specimen inside. Jenkins into the hand of Rivera. And that's a turnover. Let's see if Miami can't convert off this turnover here. Ryan Pettit, the freshman out of Westfield, New Jersey, had his right shoe on the sideline. So another turnover by Lafayette. That's now their fifth turnover of the half to Miami's two. Yeah, he's got it. Underneath for O'Meara, he wants the basketball back. Working down low on O'Boyle. Isaiah Wong up top to Miller. Dribble drive, kicks it out to Bensley Joseph. Wong 4-3 from the wing. No good, way too strong. Omir came down with the offensive rebound, and he's fouled in the paint with 4.45 showing on the game clock here in Miami. There was a lot more ball movement on that possession. Got, it, got the ball to go inside a couple times, come out. You know, it's the old inside out. Throw the ball in, something's going to be open when you kick it back out. Good, worth, good shot, it just didn't go. Worth pointing out as well, Miami in foul trouble here in the first half. Lafayette in the bonus. Last foul was on Pettit, his first team fifth. And that's a traveling violation on North Chad O'Meara. A 
A slow start to the season for Miami. One of their last seven from the field. O for their last four. They haven't scored in nearly four minutes. And they've elected to shoot 16 threes. 16 of the first 28 shots tonight. They're on pace to shoot 30, 40 threes in this game. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a good beat. Another turnover. Here comes Miami in transition. Wilga Poplar with a dribble drive, and he threw that left arm. But the foul is going to be called on Rivera. That could have gone either way for me, especially when Poplar extended that left arm. Yeah, watch here. Let's see what he does with his arm. Oof. Uh, a little bit of a push off of that left arm. He'll take it. Justin Vanderbon will check back in. Rivera's going to have to take a seat. That's his second foul here in the first half. So Rivera's got two. Fulton, the quarterback, has two. Long way too short on the baseline jumper. The hurricane seems to be forcing just a little too much here. Nearly another turnover by Lafayette. It'll remain Leopards basketball. But uh, both point guards here on the bench. Nigel Pack has six points, but two personal fouls. And now C.J. Fulton with five points. He's got a pair of fouls. And it back up top to O'Boyle. This is T.J. Berger. O'Boyle will fire away for three. Too strong off the right side of the iron. Bensley Joseph down to the rebound for Miami. Works right, comes back. And he'll pull up and hit a pair, and we're all square. Boy, that was uh, nearly five minutes of basketball without a bucket for Miami. Bensley Joseph breaks the ice with 3.40 left to play in the half. We're all square. We got a good one here in Miami tonight. Let's go center 22 all. Miami and Lafayette with 3.40 remaining in the first half. The Miami Hurricanes tonight, boy, shooting just a mere 27% from the field. Last season, this is a crew that shot 47%. Yeah, a reduction of 20%, that, that hurts a lot. They just need to, uh, you know, it's one of those nights where the rims are a little tight. They might want to try to get some shots from a little bit mid-range as opposed to shooting threes and try to get, get the bucket to open up a little for them, and then they can go back to shooting threes after that. 16 of the first 30 shots taken by Miami have been threes here tonight. Miami 5 of 16 from three-point territory. Vanderbond hands it off. No, we'll keep it. He'll fire and pull up and hit. Silky smooth and a nice touch for the sophomore center. Good looking shot. Squared up. Looking at the bucket. Vanderbond's got six. Wong inside to Omir who works right. And I think TJ Berger might have got a hand in there. And Omir's going to head to the free throw line for a one and one opportunity. You can see the Lafayette defenders frustrating the Hurricanes a little bit. It goes down inside, and you see them collapse with three guys. Here we go. Goes inside. They come down with the help, swiping at it, hit him in the arms. An area of concern for Miami early as well, just one of four from the charity strike. Mears one for two, needs to hit the first to get the second, and he misses. Too strong off the back of the iron. So Miami unable to capitalize on their opportunities early. Lafayette hanging around. They've got a two-point advantage. Vanderbond now, the seven-footer, got Omir off his feet. Now he pulls up a bit too strong. But boy, did he just create a nice look for himself about 10 feet away from the basket. Miller for three. And it's good. There we go. Nice smooth stroke. No hesitation put it in. It's an area of his game that he's worked on. Anthony Walker, Wooga Poplar, and Jordan Miller. Uh, Coach L lumped into a category. You know, we can't have those guys shooting five threes a game, but they're good enough. If they take one, two, or three, we feel like we're going to be in a really good spot. Yeah. Oh, Boyle in trouble. Into the hands of Berger. Wow from deep with two seconds left. No good. Isaiah Wong has the rebound. 
That rattled in and out. That was halfway down for T.J. Berger. Another three for Jordan Miller. Too strong. Thought he was feeling it. Tried to get a string of a few right there. Miami up by one. 140 left to play in the half here in Coral Gables. Berger just looked him off. O'Boyle for three. Top of the key, and he rattles it home. Boy, Mike Jordan has got to love what he sees out of his guys here in the first half of Miami tonight. Just look over at that bench. They all love it. They're going crazy over there. They're really happy with their performance at this point. Jordan is as animated as any other player on the bench. Here's Isaiah Wong. That gives Miami a one-point lead. Well, we said it about 20 minutes ago. Neither team is afraid to shoot it from outside, and it's proven to be the case. Miami with seven made threes here for the first half. Seven of 19. 37% from three-point land. Pettit, far wing, underneath, O'Boyle, contested, he hits, and the bucket with a foul. There's that old adage, never foul the jump shooter. Leo O'Boyle for three, it's good. Give him another one from the free throw line. O'Boyle, a senior out of Scranton, started all 30 games last season. Nice penetration with the kick out to him in the corner. Poplar had to go running out after him and fouled him. Far side corner, three is good, and the foul. Misses the opportunity for the four-point play, so it's Lafayette by two with 45 seconds left to play here in the half. O'Boyle scored in double figures in seven of his nine Patriot League games last year. Bensley Joseph now with the basketball. Far wing. Top of the key. He'll fire away for three and miss. And there's a foul on the floor. Norchad O'Meara is a big, strong young man down low. And the foul is going to be on Justin Vanderbond. His first of the half. Yeah, Lafayette's having trouble keeping the body on those guys down low and they're having to get real physical with them. Norchad O'Meara has as many rebounds as any Hurricane had in the first half last season. Cam McGusty had eight against Alabama. And O'Meara misses again. Miami struggling mightily from the free throw line. A whistle on the floor. Jordan Miller pointing out that there seems to be a wet spot up near the elbow, so we'll take care of that. 31 seconds left to play here in the half. Uh, Lafayette, for all intents and purposes, can take the final shot here in the half and go into the locker room with the lead. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they have on their mind here. They've really put up a good effort this half, playing with a lot of intensity, a lot of energy, playing very physical. 30 to 28 Lafayette, 25 seconds left to play in the half. Hard screen set by O'Boyle. Berger with the basketball. Into the hands of C.J. Fulton, who's back in with the two personal fouls. Dribbling, working against Wong, O'Boyle for three, no good. He's got his own rebound, puts it up, no good. O'Meara with the defensive rebound, and he tosses it right into the hands of C.J. Fulton. Here's a heave at the buzzer, it's no good. Off the left side of the glass, and at the half here tonight, right, 30 to 28 in favor of the Leopards. What do you make of the first half? I just think anytime you play a team that you're supposed to be, um, it's an underdog, that team always has nothing to lose and everything to gain. And some of that's going on they've done is they've taken Miami away from their game. And they're, they're almost dictating the terms here at this point. 20 more minutes on opening night in college basketball here in Miami tonight. The Leopards with a two-point lead coming out of the break against the Miami Hurricanes. In the paint looking. Fulton up top. Jenkins for three is no good. A foul on the floor. Two Miami players are down. And the foul is going to be on Leo O'Boyle. His first foul. Nigel Pack got twisted up down low, and he's grabbing at that left hamstring. But Jordan Miller just asked him if he was okay, and he said, I'm good to go. Nigel Pack had two fouls in the first half, so two. Did C.J. Fulton. The two point guards 
for these respective teams. Miami spreads them out offensively. Pack will fire away for three. That was no good. Omir down with the offensive rebound. That's his 11th rebound. He is, he is down there with his lunch pail. And he's just working away. He's definitely uh, he's doing a great job down inside. He's been outstanding down low in the paint. However, he's been unable to convert offensively. 0 of 4 from the field. 1 of 4 from the free throw line. He's got a couple of opportunities right here. And two very quick fouls by yeah. the Leopards. And you can see he, on that rebound, he, he, got, he brought that ball down too low and the guards came down and tried to strip him of it instead of trying to keep it up higher. Oh, Boyle's going to have to check out the sharpshooter for the Leopards. Vanderbond's back in. O'Meer out of the recess, I suppose, just a change of scenery. Now on this end of the floor, makes all the world the difference for North Chad O'Meer. Now a hybrid press here by the Miami defense. Looking to make this Leopards offense uncomfortable. Rivera underneath for Vanderbond, who pump fake. Looked like he had an easy layup. Now he goes back underneath. He puts it up. It's no good. Boy, the first look, Murray, I thought he had an easy look and a layup in at the rim. Yeah, I think you're right. He was a little intimidated, I think, or surprised that he was open that way. There's North Chad O'Meara down low with the right hand. Four quick points to start the second half for North Chad O'Meara. Five points. 12 rebounds. Fulton, left wing, above the key. They work it down low for Jenkins. Good ball movement for the Leopards. Fulton again, dribble drive, got tangled up in transition. Here comes Isaiah Wong! It's a great lead pass from Poplar. Really made that happen right there. A steal and a dunk. Mike Jordan calls a timeout. Six nothing run to start the second half for Miami. They've got a four point lead over Lafayette. Has not been a whole lot of scoring in the paint here tonight. Uh, both teams satisfied to shoot the ball from 22 feet out and beyond. Yeah, just four points in the paint for Lafayette, eight points in the paint for the Hurricanes. Out of the timeout, C.J. Fulton leading the charge for the Leopards. On the far wing, in trouble, picked up his dribble. Jenkins over to Berger. Berger, baseline, step back three on the way, no good. And transition, Wilga Poplar working with the left hand. Back up top, Wong for three. After the dunk, he's got a triple. Give him three more, he's got 13. Great defensive possession for the Hurricanes. Comes down to the other end, gets it a, gets a three. Turns into an offensive possession there. Now Miami pressuring defensively. This is a team last season. There have certainly been some guys no longer here, right? Cam McGusty, Charlie Moore, Sam Wardenberg, all three of which led a massive helping hand to the Elite Eight run. But when that team last year smelt blood in the water, they attacked and they just stepped on your throat and they didn't let up and they did a lot of it in transition. Here comes Nigel Pack. Look at him fly up the floor. Underneath for Jordan Miller. Out for Poplar. In the paint. Underneath. He had a little bit too mustard on that. Yeah, that was a great look. He was hoping to catch him down low, get a nice little dunk down below. A little too much on that. Tried to throw it up originally for Jordan Miller, who had to just swing it out to the near side baseline for Wooga Poplar. Right idea, just a little bit too much zip on that pass. Yeah. Berger with a high screen from Vanderbond rolls. Berger double teamed up top. Now Fulton, right wing. Miller switches on to him. In the paint, looking. Underneath. Jenkins, three on the shot clock. It's no good. Second chance opportunity, no good. Norchad O'Meara down with the rebound. Another rebound for Norchad O'Meara. Wooga Poplar with a strong drive, and he'll head to the free throw line. He put on the Jets there. He turned it on and 
Went to the hole. Norchad O'Meer, five points, 13 rebounds. Poplar, here's another look. Taking it to the hole. Strong, knew he's going to get hit. Held on to the ball. Goes to the free throw line for two. It's the 46th time in the last 54 games, by the way, that Isaiah Wong has 10 plus points. Wow. Pacing the scoring here tonight with 13 points and four rebounds. Poplar's first from the charity stripe. No good. Tight rim rattles in and out. Now Leo O'Boyle will check back in for the Leopards. Miami with a seven-point lead on a 9-0 run to start the second half. That's exactly the kind of thing you want to do when you come out of the half, right? Go on a 9-0 run. Make it 10. So the scoring drought at 3 minutes and 40 seconds to start the second half for Lafayette. There's a look underneath and a bucket for Jenkins. Kyle Jenkins, junior out of Connecticut. Started every game he appeared in except for senior day last season. Had a season high last year, 18 points at Duke. Inside Cameron Indoor Stadium, Isaiah Wong for three, feeling it. That misses off to the right. 15.40 left to play. Jenkins up top. Lafayette slowing down the offense inside for Leo O'Boyle. Now Fulton thought about pulling up, and he's fouled by Jordan Miller. And Miller, that's going to be his second personal foul. 38-32, all Miami early here in the second half. Okay, we'd open. Second half, pulling away with a six-point lead. Your thoughts, kind of, Murray, as we come out of the recess here to start the second half, first five minutes. I thought the Hurricanes did a fantastic job regrouping at halftime. They came out much more intensity, and you can definitely see it on the defensive end, and I think it's really helped them open up with that 10-0 run when we got going. So a six-point lead for Miami. Lafayette hanging around here in Coral Gables tonight. Had a two-point lead at the half. A little bit of foul trouble. O'Boyle for three. It's no good. A bit too short. A foul on the floor. Are they going to get Isaiah Wong? I think they will. Reached around and grabbed the hips of Josh Rivera. Boy, it looked like a pretty good box out to me. Yeah, Murray. I think they were trying to say he, he initiated the contact and backed out. But I agree with you, that was a little questionable. So Isaiah, his first foul of the night. T.J. Berger being double teamed by Joseph and Miller. Fulton for three. It's good. Lafayette back within three with 15 minutes showing on the game clock here at the Watsko Center. New floor, by the way, a new look for the Hurricanes here in Miami this season. Nigel Peck on the other end. Matches the Fulton three. Boy, the Hurricanes are making them work really hard for everything. Good hustle by Bensley Joseph. Ball rolled off his fingertips and sitting on the sidelines. So it'll remain Lafayette basketball. Yeah, look at this. He's on the ground chasing the ball. Two people on the ground chasing the ball. They really, uh, Miami has definitely picked up the intensity. And that's what they would consider on the coaching staff, winning plays. You got it. This is a, a Lafayette basketball team. Obviously, nobody knowing what to expect. And it'll be a couple of weeks, probably a good month before you really have a true understanding of what you have. Uh, but these are the type of teams that Coach Laranega loves to schedule early. In this case tonight, Lafayette will play a similar style, shoot a lot of threes, and they've got a bit of a height advantage. Yeah, and I, I do think this Lafayette team is a very good team. They're going to win a lot of games in the Patriot this year. Jenkins is three, no good. Off the left side of the rim. A Leopards team, by the way, that lost their two leading scorers in Neil Quinn and Tyrone Perry. Quinn transferred to Richmond. Perry, the graduate to Tennessee Tech. Nor Chad O'Meara. Underneath, he could see the grit on his face. Wow. Very athletic play right there. 
And watch Bensley Joseph guard a defender. One of the elite defenders in all of college basketball, not just the Atlantic Coast Conference. And now you see the intensity from Miami defensively. You can hear wow. the crowd. And C.J. Fulton is forced to call timeout. 13-38 left to play. Miami by eight. Mike Jordan with just one timeout remaining in the final 14 minutes of this contest here tonight. Uh, the intensity, Murray, has quickly picked up here for Miami in the second half. Yeah, it's, it's tripled what it was in the first half. They really have come out and decided uh, they want to put an end to this, and they're going to get after it. So. Miami outscoring Lafayette 15-5 here in the second half. An eight-point lead. Lafayette had a two-point lead at halftime. Fulton, 4-3, deep, right wing, it's good. The he, sophomore out of Ireland. He's in the zone. It's one of those nights for him. He's in the zone right here. A little shimmy shake on the near side wing, and he fired away a step back three for Fulton. Lafayette back to within five. Pack over for Wong. Lafayette just daring Miami to shoot the three. They've pulled up 24 times from three tonight. There's a turnover. Yeah, just a little careless dribble off his foot. The Leopards trying to pull closer. Baseline drive, and Jordan Miller's going to get called for another foul. That's going to be his third. Anthony Walker set the check in for Miami. He'll get Miller. So Jordan Miller with three fouls, five points, and five rebounds. North Chad O'Meara, three points away from a double-double. He's got 13 rebounds and seven points. Isaiah Wong leading all scores tonight with 13. Five-point lead for Miami. And T.J. Berger stepped on the sideline. Another turnover by the Leopards. C.J. Fulton's got a Lafayette high 11 points. Lafayette now with eight turnovers. Miami with six. Nigel Pack shook him off, and he missed. That was a quick shake off. He is quick with yes. the basketball in his hands. In the paint, behind the arc, on the elbow. Trying nice look it. underneath for Jenkins. Nice feed from Leo O'Boyle. Yeah, he's been calling for it down low. He's had a mismatch there. They switched. The Miami lead back to just three. 12-4-4 left to play. A timeout. Coach Larinaga having a conversation with Nigel Pack. We'll take a break. Miami by three. Getaway sales event is going on. A couple assists for Miami tonight. A big addition to this program this season. Bro. Well, you can see he can really stroke the ball. Very comfortable. Fires away. He can also create space for himself with those quick moves he has. He was Kansas State's most improved player last season. The Big 12's most improved player. First team all Big 12. 17 and a half points, four rebounds a game. And that's an offensive foul. Anthony Walker. His first foul of the night. Doesn't have a point, doesn't have a rebound. Slow start to the season for Anthony Walker. And now an opportunity on the other end here for Lafayette to tie this game. Coach L having a conversation with the officials. Yeah, I'm not sure he had his feet set on that. Ramey Steins, Leslie Jones, Anthony Eads, the officials here in Miami tonight. Defense continues to pressure the Leopards. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Lafayette still unable to get anything going offensively. 
Hennett got double team. An opportunity in the corner for three, no good. Off the fingertips of Norchad O'Meara. Two seconds left on the shot clock. O'Meara just went flying into the camera crew. Down on the baseline. So the Leopards here with an opportunity with about two seconds left on the shot clock. O'Meara's all right, went flying into the seats, not on the baseline. Boy, yeah. both, both teams are playing with a sense of urgency out there right now. Now the officials have gathered, and I think they want to take a look at the clock. I think they want to see how much time is left on the shot clock. Forty-three, forty. Miami leads over Lafayette. Eleven twenty-four left to play. Uh, let's see here. That ball looked like it actually probably went out around three point nine seconds left. Uh, so a nice job here by the officials to probably stop this thing and get this correct. It did look like that ball might have hit the baseline with about three and a half, four seconds left. And that's what they'll continue to review. How about Lafayette, Murray? Not going away in this ball game. They are, they are just persistent. They will not go away. They keep the pressure. Miami really amped up the pressure, and these guys are handling it. They are coming back for more. Usually when you put that kind of pressure on a team, uh, they turn it over. They throw it away. They try to get rid of the ball as soon as possible, and um, it's not happening. Lafayette is really handling this pressure well. And they put 18 seconds back on the shot clock. I think maybe it hit the rim. Okay, then that's what they were checking yeah, for. I think it hit the rim when he when he put it up. All right, so an opportunity so here for Lafayette. Didn't even think about that. Saw it hit off the hands of Norchad O'Meara and thought maybe they wanted to add a couple of ticks left to that shot clock. But Lafayette's got 18. 43-40, Miami leads. C.J. Fulton. Up top, right wing. Miami continues to pressure the Leopards defensively. Underneath, Rivera working. Fulton for three in the tie. Yes! All square with 11 minutes left to play here at the Watsko Center. Fulton's got 14. Going to see who's going to flinch first. Isaiah Wong on the other end for three. It's no good. Now a chance for Lafayette to retake the lead. C.J. Fulton is on fire. Being pressured by Bensley Joseph. Now with the paint, Rivera with the left hand. No good, and he's fouled. Josh Rivera is going to head to the free throw line for a pair. Boy, they just lost Fulton defensively, and that is not a guy you can lose right yeah, now. He's not the one to lose right now. No doubt. Down low. Working hard with the ball. Got it with the body, a little bit with the arm. So Amir's first personal foul. Miami's committed five fouls. Lafayette has committed three. Rivera to the line. His first, oh, no good. Rivera now 0 of three from the free throw line tonight. He's got four points and five rebounds. An opportunity right now to give the Leopards a lead with 10.41 left to play. Miami has not shot the ball all that well here tonight. Outscoring the Leopards here for the second half. Boy, Rivera now 0 for 4 from the charity strike this evening, proving to be costly for the Leopards. Miami shooting 40% from the free throw line. Lafayette shooting 25%. Wow. Two for eight. The, uh, Rick Barry would not like that. No. The great Rick Barry who has his number 24, retired in the rafters here with the Watsko Center, played in Miami from 1962 through 1965. One of the best. Absolutely. Maybe you can come back and teach him the under yeah. underhand uh, free throw. You're not kidding. Here we go. 43 all. Fulton. High screen from O'Boyle. Fulton working left. Back up top for O'Boyle on the baseline. Now they work it into the corner. A three on the way. Wong off his feet. No good. 
Bensley Joseph with a rebound. Miami just caught a break. An open look in the corner for TJ Berger. Wong nearly lost the basketball. He did. It'll remain Miami basketball with 22 seconds on the shot clock. Now Jordan Miller's going to check back in for North Chad O'Meara. Boy, the Hurricanes and the Leopards in a dogfight on opening night in college basketball here in Coral Gables. That's what it's all about, right? Everybody's checking to see where they stand and, and um, get their first chance to look at each other playing somebody else. Wong gets fouled. Here's Wong. 15 yep. foul. He's going to get it on Berger. His second. Fifth Lafayette foul. Fulton's got three. He's got to be careful. Everybody on the floor right now for the Leopards has at least two fouls. Isaiah Wong's got 13 points. Fulton's got 14. You can see why C.J. Fulton, a Patriot League all-teamer last year. Bensley Joseph now pulls up, and it's good. Beautiful play. Great move, confidence, quickness. Quick trigger with a jump shot for the sophomore, Bensley Joseph. Berger gets double teamed up top. Now Miller guarding O'Boyle. Fulton looking for a screen, gets it. O'Boyle working left, has Miller in knots. Here's a three in the corner, no good. And who's that off of? It's gonna be off of Lafayette in Miami basketball. But Leo O'Boyle just put Jordan Miller on ice skates at the block. Yeah. They're, they're, they're just Whoop. physical. Yeah, look at this. Goes up. Win or lose, Lafayette has a lot to be proud of, a lot to work off of. Lost their two leading scorers from last season. Hanging with the Miami Hurricanes here tonight, they look good. Wooga Poplar misses badly. Planked it off the left side of the rim. And Lafayette, last couple of times down the floor in possessions, have gotten some really good looks. Yeah, they have. They're really going to enjoy watching this film. They're going to see a lot of good things from the tape. Here's Vanderbond for three. No thought better of it. On the baseline now. Up top, Berger working in the paint. Here's Rivera. Back into the hands of Fulton. And there's a turnover. Look at Poplar to the left, Walker to the right, and a blocking foul. Anthony Walker will head to the free throw line. He took off from the logo and just glided through the air to the rim. A little like Dr. J in the olden day right there. <laughs> I don't mean to date myself. Nearly traveled, too. Anthony Walker to the line to shoot a pair. Walker does not have a point tonight. 0 of 2 from three-point territory. 0 for 4 from the floor. This is his first free throw that he's uh, attempted here this evening. And the official's telling him, you got to tuck your jersey. And he said, I did. Well, he didn't. <laughs> and now we've got that sorted out. Depends on what did means. Yeah. <laughs> His interpretation of right. I gotta tuck this in was a little bit different than the officials. Correct. <laughs> Ryan Pettit, the freshman out of New Jersey, checks back in for Lafayette. Pettit, a sharp shooting freshman, averaged 12 and a half points a game. At Rutgers Prep School. Miami by four with 822 left to play. Nearing our under eight media timeout. Lafayette hanging around on this Monday night in Coral Gables. Look at that pressure. An elite defender. Yes. Bensley Joseph. For sure. All up in TJ Berger. Lafayette has tried to find that backdoor cut all night long. Now Rivera works to his left double team underneath for Vanderbond. Good offense here by Lafayette. Now to the hands of Berger, up top. Here's a three on the way, no good. Wooga Popper's gonna get called for a foul. 
And TJ Berger's going to head to the line for three. Timeout here in Back inside the Watsco Center. Miami by four with 7.52 left to play. Josh Rivera heads to the line for three free throws where he's 0 for 4 tonight. And he's having all sorts of troubles. And Lafayette now 2 for 9 from the charity stripe this evening. And at the moment, that is a big difference maker. And this game potentially being won or lost for the Leopards. Yeah, that's, that's the whole game right there. 0 for 5, now he's 0 for 6. Wow. He is having all sorts of troubles from the free throw line. Rivera, a freshman. He's got four points here tonight. 0 for 6 from the strike. The seventh attempt is no good. He missed all three. A backbreaker for Lafayette. Hanging around against the Miami Hurricanes on this Monday night in Miami. Now Miami saying, this is where we take control. Now we capitalize. Jordan Miller says, I got it. No, he doesn't. Was a popular offensive rebound. 15 on the shot clock. Anthony Walker says, I'll fire away. And that's no good. Soaring through the air. Jordan Miller gets the bucket. A couple of offensive rebounds where Miami has been proficient here this evening. They haven't always capitalized, but they do right there. They lead by six. Yeah, that was a great effort by Miller. Very athletic tip right there. Now Jordan Miller has it taken away. They get tied up on the floor. It'll be Miami basketball. Leo O'Boyle and Norchad O'Meara set to check back in. Anthony Walker will take a seat. He struggled tonight. Two points, 0 for 5 from the floor. 0 for 3 from 3. So Walker takes a seat. Norchad O'Meara's back in. There's a lot of athleticism here on the floor right now for Miami. Wilga Poplar may be the most athletic player on the team. O'Meara can jump right out of the gym. You can consider the fact that Pack, Wong, and Miller are out there. Jordan Miller, one of the best offensive rebounders in college basketball. A little undersized, but he was unbelievable on the boards last season. Yeah. Really is a lot more athletic this year, this team is. There's Isaiah Wong. Step back. Three. No good. He gets fouled by T.J. Berger. Now Isaiah Wong will try to capitalize on three freebies. Something Josh Rivera couldn't do on the other end. And maybe a little bit. Dances around the pick. Reaches around at the last minute and catches him here, I think. He's got a tendency to do that. Yeah. Very sneaky right there. Isaiah's got 13 points for Miami tonight. Give him 14. Isaiah Wong has passed DJ Vasilovich and Cameron McGusty on Miami's all-time scoring list this evening. Now sitting alone in 21st place. He's six points behind John Sammons, who played for the Canes from 98 to 2002. Isaiah makes a second. Now Miami extends that lead. They lead by eight. This is their largest lead. It ties their largest lead of the night. It's good timing for that. I'll tell you what, the turning point right now was when that clock wasn't ticking a few minutes ago and Rivera missed all three at the free yeah. throw line. Yeah, that's, that's really uh, that's a problem. Lafayette 2 for 11 from the free throw line. Miami 9 for 15. O'Boyle coughed it up. Fulton with 7 seconds on the shot clock. Down to 5. O'Boyle for 3. That's a high arcing 3. No good. Nearly came down with his own offensive rebound. The ball's in the hands of Nigel Pack. Pack for 3. Fires away. No good. Quick trigger there by Nigel Pack. I thought he was going to make him pay the price there for leaving him alone. Backdoor cut. Fulton hands it out for three. The southpaw. Ryan Pennant no good. It's been fun to watch these Leopards here tonight. Bunch of fresh faces. Isaiah Wong. A step back three. No good. Foul on the floor. And looks like they caught him here. They 
got O'Meara. His second. Lafayette's in the bonus with 541 left to play. Miami leads by nine. Leo O'Boyle will head to the free throw line. O'Boyle's got six points and four rebounds. He's 0 for 1 from the free throw line. He's 1 for 2. Really nice crowd on hand here at the Watsco Center tonight. A uh, new wrinkle here at the Watsco Center this season. The band's on one side of the floor, and students engulf both sides. Create a little bit more of a home court advantage. It's definitely a boisterous crowd in here tonight. They're glad to be here, and they're excited to watch this. Excited that basketball is back, cheering on their Miami Hurricanes, who made a deep run and an appearance in the Elite Eight last season. Miami by seven, 520 left to play. Isaiah Wong hands it off to Jordan Miller. The Leopards are packing the paint. Poplar pushed off, and it's an offensive foul. And he just asked the official how. Pleading his case, but he's not going to get it here. He's using that off arm right there. Now Wug is going to check out, and Bensley Joseph's going to come back in. Now Wuga didn't like the call. No, but it was the right call. As soon as you see extension with either the right or left arm, you don't see too many guys embellish it all that much. You're going to get called for it. Yeah. Lafayette has not scored a bucket in their last five minutes and 53 seconds. You can change that right now. Justin Vanderbaum with a bucket in the foul. He'll head to the free throw line. So Lafayette right back within five, a chance to make it four. Just hanging around, Kyle, or if they just hang around long enough, they think they'll have a chance to win. I've been waiting to see if they could feed Vanderbaum a little bit more on that low post block area all night long. Lafayette's got the size advantage in this contest tonight. He makes it. It's a four-point game. 5.13 left to play. Miami's attempted 31 three-pointers here tonight. More than they attempted all of last season with authority, Jordan Miller. Look at the strength. Yeah, he definitely elevated over everybody there. Used his left hand, put that in. That was a beautiful shot. That was strong with the left hand. A backdoor cut for Old Boyle. Turns it over. Bensley Joseph to the rack, and he got fouled hard. He slipped, and then he got fouled by C.J. Fulton. And C.J. Fulton, that's going to be his fourth personal foul. And Bensley Joseph will head to the free throw line for his two. Kind of grabbed at that right wrist a little bit. Yeah, I think his feet got up uh, uh, out from under him here. Maybe he slipped a little more. Oh, he oh. stepped on his foot. I'll tell you, he almost, he, he kind of ran himself right into the foul. There was really not a whole lot C.J. Fulton was going to do in that situation. No. T.J. Berger set the check back in for Lafayette. He's not going to be able to leave Fulton on the bench very long, though. I think they actually called that foul on the floor. So this is a one and one opportunity for Bensley Joseph, and he misses it. But Jordan Miller tipped it around. It's into the hands of the Leopards in transition, and it'll remain Lafayette basketball. Just not quick enough offensively. Kyle Jenkins uh, was the recipient of that pass, but Bensley Joseph was just screaming back down the floor. Yeah. Ideally, in that situation, you want the ball in the middle and you want two guys, one on each wing. Just didn't pan out. Miami by six. Lafayette with a chance to creep in a little bit. Closer! Yes! Kyle Jenkins. Caught the cane sleeping a little bit under the basket right there. Miami has not been all that sharp in this ballgame here tonight. Lafayette has played really, really well. North Chad O'Meara. Give him two. And a chance from the free throw line for an extra one. 
That's what they brought Norchad Almir to Miami for right there. Look here. He's using skill and strength. There's Two the dribbles yep. into the rack. Pure skill and followed by pure strength right there. The unconventional three-point play for Norchad Almir. The lead is back to seven. Berger, five on the shot clock, step back, three, lets it fly, no good. Vanderbaum with the left hand, no good. Grabs his own offensive rebound. They're tangled up down in the paint. Whistles, it's a jump ball. We'll head to a timeout with 3.43 left to play. It'll be Lafayette basketball when we come back. 3.43 left to go, Miami by seven. Leopards of Lafayette, Isaiah Wong pacing everybody to 16 points tonight. C.J. Fulton's got 14. Lafayette hanging around here, Murray. Uh, and you hate to harp on it, but if they've been a, if they could be a little bit better from the free throw line, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be probably within two or three at this point. Yeah, they're really going to be disappointed when they look at that and see the free, uh, the opportunities they missed with the free throws. Pettit swings it. Fulton, two left with one. They got it off. No good. Here comes Isaiah Wong in transition. Nigel Pack, that's an easy bucket. Pack wanted the foul, didn't get it. Now Miami by nine. Their largest lead of the game with three minutes left to play. Trying to put this one out of reach, but Lafayette has not gone away all night long. It has ne definitely not been easy for him tonight. Fulton underneath. It's taken away one more time by Miami. That's the 12th turnover tonight by Lafayette. They're 5 of 14 from the free throw line. It's made all the difference in the world in this game to open up the season here this evening. Nigel Pack says, I don't care what the score is. I'm going to fire away. Yeah, that, that's just a beautiful shot right there kind of uses his man as a little bit of a screen there and fires away. Now with 2.20 left to play, Miami going to try to salt it away. Pettit for three. He's too strong. Rivera with the offensive rebound, but he gave it right into the hands of Isaiah Wong. Miami not slowing down offensively. Pack says, I'll do it again. No good. O'Meara, Might have been an opportunity there. To, yeah, O'Meara really wanted that ball in the post right there. He wanted it and an opportunity to kill about 20 more seconds. Yeah. But under two minutes left to play. Miami with a 12-point lead. Not for long. Back to nine. Fulton, he's got 17. Big night for C.J. Fulton to start his season. Minute 30 left to play. Lafayette's got just one timeout left. Bensley Joseph goes hard to the rack. Vanderbond screaming, it's got to be a tie-up underneath. But he's going to be called for a hold, and Bensley Joseph will go to the free throw line. Joseph gives that hesitation move and just keeps pressure on the defense here. Hesitates, goes, pressure all the way. They're going to call that every time. Hard to the rim, and he got tied up with Vanderbond. Really nice showing for this Lafayette ball club, though, under the direction of first-year head coach Mike Jordan here tonight. Previously at Colgate as an assistant for nine seasons. He'll be really, really encouraged when they put on the film. Yeah, I think he will. These guys are really, uh, really uh, he should be proud of his players tonight. Next up for Miami Friday here at home against UNC Greensboro. As for Lafayette, they've got a brutal non-conference schedule. Two games inside the friendly confines of the Kirby Sports Center, playing five road games before their home opener on November 22nd. This weekend, they're at St. John's. To the Big Apple they go. Nigel Pack with the offensive rebound after a couple of opportunities. 
Miami will pull it back. Laranega whistling, saying, settle down, boys. Yeah. Trying to take the air out of the ball here. Let's get it over with. Five on the shot clock. Wong's going to have to fire away. Down to two. Bensley Joseph will pull the trigger. No good. Nor Chad O'Meer with the rebound. And O'Meer going up. He got fouled. And he'll head to the free throw line for two. I'm not sure he went over the back here a little bit. Maybe, maybe he's just jumping over everybody. Boy, can he fly, though, can he? It's unbelievable. I'm telling you. For a guy that big. He's on a pogo stick when he leaves 240 pounds, right? He's, he's, a, he's a big man. Boy, nothing to hang your heads about if you're Lafayette coming out of this ballgame tonight. They've been really, really good. And Mike Jordan, when it's all said and done, and they cool off a little bit, they're going to be really, really proud of the way that these guys play. Yeah, and you think about it, they went on the road here, right? They're at an ACC, uh, uh, an ACC team's home court. And you really never know how the kids are going to respond, right? They could have come down here and been intimidated and been, uh, you know, forced into playing a different way, but they didn't. They came in and they puffed up their chest and they played hard. Did a fantastic job. And it helps the Hurricanes, right? It helps them to have to play against a gutty, tough team yep. like that. O'Meara makes the first. North Chad O'Meara, 11 points and 15 rebounds. It's the first 15 rebound game by a Hurricane since Nysir Brooks on December 8th of 2020 against Florida Gulf Coast University. As Miami puts this one on ice in their home opener against the Lafayette Leopards here this evening. Kyle Jenkins for three is no good. By Joe Pack coughs it up. And now Jenkins gets fouled. Boy, Pack just got triple teamed down low on the block. He's pleading his case. And he got held. I got fouled. But to no avail, Kyle Jenkins will go to the free throw line. Look at that triple team down low. Yeah, they just surround him. And then Pack, who had it taken away, commits the foul. Yeah, he just came down with that right arm a little too hard. Looks like Isaiah Thompson. And one additional leopard here will check in in the waning moments of this contest here tonight. Thompson, a sophomore guard out of White Plains, New York. As Jenkins misses the first, all sorts of problems at the free throw line with Leopards here tonight. And Devin Hines, the sophomore out of West Palm Beach, back home for a night. Average seven and a half minutes as a freshman last season. He's into the game for the Leopards here for the final 42 seconds left. Nice crowd on hand at the Watsko Center tonight. We thank you for joining us for opening night of college basketball. A long season awaits for both of these teams. Isaiah Wong calls timeout. Let's take a quick break. 42 seconds left when we come back. Fun opening night of college basketball. Isaiah Wong with 16 points for Miami. Fulton with 17, 5 of 7 from deep for the Leopards. Jenkins has 12 for Lafayette. Nigel Pack has 14 in his Canes debut. Nor Chad O'Meara with a double double. 11 points and 15 rebounds for Miami. Miami has this kind of talent on the team this year that you're going to see some major upsets, I think. They're going to really beat some good teams this year. Isaiah Thompson fouls Nigel Pack. With 42 seconds left. Check back in, both with four fouls. That would 
would imagine if Pack makes this and Lafayette misses on the other end, they'll probably stop fouling. At this juncture, down by 11. They make it 12. O'Boyle hands it off to Fulton. Nearing the final 30 seconds left to play here in Miami tonight. Lafayette needs a three. They're going to have to fire away. And they'll work it down low to Jenkins. Far corner now for Pettit. And he misses. Bensley Joseph down with the rebound, and that should do it. And maybe not. Another foul. Stand by T.J. Berger. We are still playing hard down to the end. So Berger commits the foul. And that'll send Bensley Joseph to the line for two. Boy, Lafayette gave Miami a run here tonight. Nice little contest on opening night. Yeah, I think it's the kind of opening game that's helpful for both teams. I think Miami, both both sides are going to learn something from tonight. And uh, Hurricanes had to battle, right? They had to, show, had to show some character tonight to really, really hunker down and get ready to win. I think for Miami, what they're about to put on film will expose maybe a little bit opening night, and uh, you may very well see a, a much more polished team four days from now. Yeah, these games are great for the coaches and the players as well, right? You get a chance to look at it all on tape and break it down and, and sort of talk through the good things and the bad things, right? It's all about the good, bad, and the ugly here. Final 10 seconds left to play. Miami with a 13-point lead as they head towards an opening night victory over the Lafayette Leopards. Jordan Miller takes it away, and that'll put it on ice. Miami beats Lafayette by a final score of 67 to 54. Murray Jarman, your final thoughts as we wrap this one up here this evening. Hey, it was a fun one to watch, fun one to work. Uh, guys came out and played hard, did all they could to win both sides, and that's all you can ask, all right? So for Murray Jarman and our entire production crew,